Hello, YouTube Nation, and welcome back to Let's Play Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri with the Alien Crossfire expansion, and me, Blue Ankylo. So, for those of you watching in real time, it's been a bit of a break in between my uh, first campaign, or my first playthrough, and this one. Um, just been spending a bit of time trying to figure out how I want to do it, and for those of you watching in the future, well, who knows, maybe you just watched it all in a row. But, uh, <laughs> this is going to be my first game of the expansion for Alpha Centauri, and I've only played one game of the original. So I've still got a lot to learn, but my first game, uh, I think got me a lot of the way there. Now before I actually start the game, I think it's fair to cut in the uh, introductory video for this game. So I will do that now, and I will meet you guys back in-game in a minute. The opening video for Alien Crossfire. Should explain what's going in on a bit years there. since Planet Fall, the human settlements have grown, carving a new world out of the chaos of planet's surface. An uneasy peace exists between the factions, <laughs> broken only by the occasional skirmish for resources. <laughs> That uneasy peace is shattered by a new arrival in the skies above Chiron. Two scout ships from different factions of a far-flung alien race arrive, seeking the location of a lost nexus of energy, the legendary Sixth Manifold. These guys are fun. Pew 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 pew! <laughs> Add some sound effects here for you guys. <laughs> Bumper cars in space. As the scout ships break apart, the survivors head for planet's surface in a handful of life pods, bringing with them a generation's old blood feud that can only end in the destruction of one side. The humans are caught in an alien crossfire. Dun dun dun! Alright, so that should have given you a uh, brief introduction to the new factions, well at least the alien factions and why this expansion is called Alien Crossfire. So if you've never played the expansion, I'll try to explain things as it goes along. Uh, as far as I know it adds, well, seven new factions, uh, mostly humans but there are the two aliens, and a few new techs, a few new secret projects. I think it does a fair bit of balancing to the game so it changes some of the building and technology stuff a little bit as far as I know. I'm certainly no expert but we can figure it out as we go. So, start game. Now this time, last time I played huge map of the planet which might have been a mistake. I probably should have just picked a normal map because the huge one was so huge. But we are going to make a random map this time because uh, that's cool. And I will be going with a standard sized planet so I don't have a ton of micro to deal with. If I was playing on my own, I might go a little bit larger, but for purposes of let's playing, I think a, a medium-sized planet is the best. Now, we will put the ocean surface a little bit lower, and there's a few reasons for this. For one, it'll give us more map to play on anyway, so even with a smaller map, this will give us a bit more land. And the big one, actually, is that the AI in all of these games, and even up to current, like, 2013 games, AIs just always seem to have a hard time dealing with oceans, um, settling on oceans, transporting over oceans. Uh, it's not their strong suit, so we're actually going to go with lower water just to help that out a little bit. And I don't know, erosive forces, I think that's wind or rain or something, so how wet the I it is maybe, I don't know. We're just going to go average. Life, Native life certainly would be an easier game on rare and harder on abundant, especially early on. Um, unless you are a very green type of a uh, faction. It's like barbarians in uh, normal Civ games. So we're just going to go average. Cloud cover, I think maybe that has more to do with rain. I don't know. Or energy production maybe from your, from your uh, various uh, tiles, whatever. Now, this is the one I spent a long time thinking about. My first game I played on Talent as University, in case you haven't watched it. Go watch that one, it's fun. <laughs> um, and I had a few hard spots, but overall it went fairly well. So I'm going to do it on a harder difficulty. I just hadn't... It was hard figuring out which one. Now, the main reason I think I did so well is that uh, the first two difficulties actually give you kind of a buff over the AI. Talent is fairly even as far as it goes, but there's one sort of caveat. The AI cannot start a secret project until the player, the human, has researched the tech. So that let me get basically every secret project in the game, which isn't super fair. Once you hit librarian or higher, that doesn't count. The AI will research their own tech and build secret projects at their own whim, so they can rush to specific secret projects. So that will make it a lot harder just by default, and the higher up we go, the more bonus resources and energy the AI gets. 
the more drones we get, and just overall bad news bears. So after a bit of practice, I think I'm actually just gonna go with Librarian. It's really only my second full game I'm starting here, and Thinker, and especially Transcend, get incredibly difficult for a newbie like me. So uh, I wanna keep the Let's Play going at a good speed, and to be not super, super hard. So there you go. And I will use a little bit of custom rules, although I think I've already set this up. Um, I haven't changed too much from my first Let's Play. You definitely want slower tech because your tech rate in the late game gets so fast anyway that that seems to be incredibly important. Look First just lets me put my uh, first colony sort of wherever I want other than starting with a colony. Um, I don't want more aggressive opponents. Last game, everyone attacked me anyway. Now Blind Research, I've read on and off. I think the game is meant to be played with Blind Research. But uh, I'm still just learning, so uh, I'm not too impressed. Now, I wasn't sure about the supply pods. I think if I leave this off, like no, uh, turn that, that option off, it spreads them out around the world, the, 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 the goody huts. Um, but uh, you actually probably have a slightly fairer game if you only put pods by your landing sites, so no one player can go get hundreds of them kind of thing, or you know, dozens anyway. So that might be slightly fair. I will leave random events on, because they weren't too much of a problem, although certainly a volcano could blow up underneath you and that could cause problems. And uh, other than that, I think I'm fine. Uh, I'm okay with restarting limited players. I don't want cooperative victory though, I'm not sure how that works, but it doesn't sound like the sort of thing I want. Anyway. There you go. Now, the factions. I am going to spend a minute here going through the factions because I'm going to be playing with the seven expansion factions instead of the, the original seven. Um, and from what I've read, these seven new factions are kind of unbalanced. Some are OP, some are maybe a bit weak. They're not as well developed as the original seven that you saw in my first campaign. So I'm mostly just doing this so you can introduce all of the seven. It's not that it's going to be the best uh, balanced game perhaps, but uh, I'll show you everybody. So starting at the top we have the cybernetic consciousness and you have got a nice little quote there I think you can put info there we go. So um, What are these guys about immune to cybernetic? It looks like yeah This is kind of like the the, the university of the expansion lots of research uh, and good with cybernetic so kind of seeming to be uh, um, the research for it. Now, I already did that last game, so I'm not going to do it again. The pirates. Now, these guys are actually really, really custom, and from what I understand, the AI is kind of crap with these guys, but a human can just be super OP. They are all around naval bases. Now, our map probably not going to be super good for this guy, but they get all kinds of bonuses to their uh, navy bases. They get more minerals and stuff from uh, ocean tiles, I believe, and... Uh, it just works a little bit differently for them. They've got some custom mechanics. Free drones. Um, I imagine this is kind of like the Hive, I think, from the first game. Uh, a little bit more about uh, workman's rights rather than just no civil liberties at all, I guess. But yeah, they keep their, their people happy, less drones, but they're not good with research and stuff. So we'll see if we meet them in game later. Data Angels, who are all about probes, I believe. Yeah, so they're all secret spy stuff, which is kind of cool. I really didn't use very many probes on my first game, so I might have to get around to that this time. Um, good probes, bad with police. Kind of cool. Cult of Planet. I believe this is the closest to the Gaians from the first one. They are really good with planet. Maybe not quite as good as the Gaians, um, but they, uh, they are all about mind worms and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's a little creepy. I'm not sure I'm going to go with them. And then we have the aliens, and there's two aliens, there's the caretakers and the usurpers, and they got kind of interesting, like the way they talk is a little bit strange, so it's going to take some a while to get used to uh, their, uh, their, their methodology of talking. Anyway, uh, the caretakers are defensive, and they get a whole bunch of alien bonuses, whatever. Um, they get resonance easily. Um, they start with they start with better stuff. They are kind of the OP factions, <laughs> as, as far as I can tell. Uh, they also get they also start with an entire scan of the the planet's surface rather than just blind, completely blind. And then the usurpers the other way. Uh, they're a bit more offensive oriented instead of defensive. Um, they get a couple different techs, but overall they're fairly similar as far as their bonuses go. They get resonance as well. Same scan. Um, even if you have blind research on, these guys can research exactly what they want anyway. So yeah, that's the difference. 
And I decided, well, the caretakers are planet and defensive, and I thought my university campaign was kind of t defensive. I never declared a war on anyone, and I mostly just fought back uh, the AIs as they attacked me. So I'm thinking I'm going to go with the offensive one this time, hopefully to get a slightly different playthrough. Uh, I'm still not going to get along with the planet very well, but that's okay. Um, if I ever do a third campaign, maybe I'll play as the Gaians or something. Um, just to, to use Mind Worms more effectively. And because we get this offensive bonus, we're going to be very strong. So yeah, this is a strong faction, and uh, hopefully the increased, dif uh, uh, the increased uh, overall difficulty will help balance things out. So, let's get to it. Risks of flowering. Considerable. But rewards of godhood. Who can measure? There you go, guys. Usurper Judah Mar. <laughs> Courage to question. Well, he talks really slowly. That's going to be annoying. But anyway, they've got kind of a, a different way of, of going about things. So anyway, we're going to play as Mar. Mar, the disastrous space battle above the skies of planet has ended, and the shattered remnants of your flagship are preparing to land on the surface. Your only comfort is that the caretaker vessel was destroyed as well, but you can look forward to facing your nemesis somewhere on the vastness of planet. You now shape the destiny of your usurper faction, which has just made planet fall. Alright, so here you go. So as I was explaining, one of the best bonuses of the aliens is you actually can see... Uh, the entire planet map, so you kind of know where the oceans are and the land and stuff. Now it's not like the default map of planet, so you won't know like where the forests the, or the uh, the jungle or the the actual Unity crashes. But um, you'll have a pretty good idea where to go. So there's quite a few things. And I'll spend a bit of minute, a bit of time here, starting out going over a couple things because I've I've played as these guys for a few turns just to see what they look like. We start with a Battle Ogre, which has 6, 3, 1, and resonance on all of them. So I believe that makes them better against uh, Psy Worms and stuff, or Mind Worms and Psy Combat. And it also has the Police trait, so it's really good at keeping your place happy. But as far as an early attacking unit goes, yeah, 6 attack is pretty good. Um, we can look at their units. They've, they're kind of alien, so if you're used to seeing the human units, yeah, these guys are kind of cool. We start with um, actually level 2 weapons if you want and resonance armor. So we can start with 231 right off the bat without having to do anything. Um, pretty pretty powerful, I would say. Um, what else do we got? Well, let's... Uh, I think we've got three colony pods. I don't know how many of the other factions start out with, but with three colony pods, I think it only makes sense to build one right here no matter what on the first turn instead of moving it around. Unfortunately, that mineral is fungus as well, so it's not going to help us right off the bat. I'll have to uh, fix that. It's not the best start, but we will get some nutrients eventually. Again, fungus nutrients. And hopefully this uh, supply pod has something good. So let's build our base. Courage to question. And uh, I forgot to, I was going to mention this early. Uh, if you'd like to have your name, like if anyone who watches along as I'm uploading these, um, if you want to have a name of a base, whether your YouTube name or something else, uh, feel free to leave it to me. I, uh, I'm totally cool renaming my bases, uh, except maybe my first one, but uh, that's fine. So we have our first base, and you can see actually we start with better defaults because we start with the recycling tanks that most factions won't start with. So we actually have a really good uh, nutrient mineral production right off the bat. The only problem is that there aren't any good tiles to work right now, so I'll definitely want to get a former out um, probably first actually. Uh, I'm going to speed a former out to try to fix this mineral tile and um, you know, start working on that kind of stuff. That's probably the best bet. I will want scouts and stuff fairly quickly, but I think one former will be a, a good decision. Now, I am going to be sending my scout out that way. I'll try to have one go each direction. I'll, I'll probably put a base somewhere over here and a base somewhere down here. Maybe eventually a, a, a fourth and fifth, depending on how, depending on what we can see down here. Um, but seeing as we start with all these colony pods, there's no reason to have them sitting around. I think you can convert them to population, and instead of having a, a size one pop, I could start with two or three for my first base. But that sounds silly because there's nowhere to work anyway. So uh, you know, basically, that's what I'm going to do. So unfortunately, I have spent a lot of time on the first episode already. We don't start with any engineering or social policies or anything. Uh, we can look at research. Oh yeah, I should, uh, I should do that. 
Um, what do we want to start with? Um, do, do, do. We are playing on a higher difficulty, so I will be running into more drone problems. As your difficulty increases, you get drones faster. Like, uh, I think by uh, on last game on um, talent, it was like four population before you got a drone. Now I think it's three or something, and all the way up to down to two or something on the hardest. I can't remember the exact numbers, but the point is, uh, drones will be more of a problem this time. Uh, I also really underestimated speeders on my last playthrough, so I will want to get those fairly quick so I can zip around and fight the enemy quicker. Uh, the, the armor is not a huge bonus. Labs for research, well, depends on how offensive I'm going to be. I'm thinking I'm going to start with the wreck commons and get some the ability to grow my cities larger early. Uh, at least build that one building and then I'll start going on units perhaps or something like that. That's kind of what I'm thinking anyway. Anyway, 11 turns per research is going to take a while anyway. So we'll have lots of time to mess around because we're not playing university this time. All right. So, we're going to lead with the scout. Oh yeah, got your that. Them lock. There we go. Okay, battle ogre. Amazing stats. Turn I do need to pick up those supply pods, of course, but uh, I think I'll go former and then I'll build another scout. Okay. I can pick that up. That was a little bit of a risk. It could have had like a bunch of mind worms that would take out my colony pod. That would have been a bad one. Anyway, we got uh, a free building, maybe? Resources exist to be consumed. Free tech. And consumed they will be. If not by this generation, then by some well, future. Well, we've already read through these anyway. Right this um, I'll, I'll show you guys the new tech, but I'm going to save a bit of time by fast-forwarding over some of, the old, some of the, the old ones I did last Let's Play. Just to save some time. Unless you guys really want to Turn see them. <laughs> Unfortunately, we've run into a bit of a dead end here with with fungus. I can't actually build a city on the fungus, so I'll have to hope that there's a, a gap on the other side or something. Because this is too close. Too close together. Okay. Come on, get through. Nope. The good news is there's probably no mine worms right by it, so I managed to get across. I guess I can probably build a base like right here or something. That would give me one, two... It'll go up to about there and around, something like that. That'll have to do. Uh, this Turn one, complete. I might make it right on the on the border with the water, maybe up here. Depends on what this tile looks like. It's kind of what I'm thinking right now. The sooner I get those bases built, the better we'll be off, I think. Production complete. Okay, yeah, probably right there then will be a good spot. Okay. Uh, I'm actually going to hold there for a second. I don't want to rush my colony pod up front. Turn complete. It's generally not a good idea. Also, I finished my former, so I should switch to... Well, I mean, we could start trying to finish one of these uh, secret projects. I certainly enjoy the human genome, even though we're not humans. And the weather paradigm for terraforming is really good. Those two I really, really enjoy. But uh, it might be hard to get them now with the AI rushing. And I will want one more scout here right off the bat to pick up a couple of those. And I'll need someone to defend my bases pretty quick anyway, so let's get on it. Okay, you are going to clear fungus. You are going to move there. That seems... Actually, yeah, it's got a nutrient tile there. Not bad then. Yeah, let's go with that. Pro I don't think you can build on rocks, so we'll have to build here on this tile. And that Turn will probably complete. do. That will also lock up this sort of entryway so the AI can't sort of get back here. Uh, if, in fact, we might have this entire island to ourselves. We are kind of on an island, so uh, I forgot to think about that. Chances are we're the only one on this island and we'll just colonize the whole thing and then we'll start uh, sending transports off to find our nearest enemy. Who uh, we might get this island too, depends on if there's anyone over here. Um, I imagine the big fight will be on this giant continent. So we actually might have a nice starting location now that I'm thinking about it. It's kind of interesting being able to see the world map as far as continents go. Anyway, base two. Tau Seti Mantle, again, send me your names for renaming these things, because the alien names are a bit weird. And why don't you work the nutrients? Yeah, work the nutrients, get another uh, population out quick, and then I'll do something else. Start with, in fact, I'm going to start with a former here as well, and then I'll build a defender after that. I, uh, I don't think we're going to be pressured very much in this game, just with the start, because there's probably no enemies nearby, so... I'm willing to bet that we're going to be a little bit safer than normal. I was hoping for a nice early war, but we might actually have it easy. Base number three. 
got another nutrient resource. That's a good one. Three nutrients and one minerals. That's a really nice tile, actually. And we'll also start you with it. Why not? Three formers to start with. Complete. What could go wrong? There's many, many things that could go wrong, guys. <laughs> I could get mindworms attacked on every single base and just be trashed. Production complete. All right, so you got your scouts. Zoom to base control. Let's. Uh, should I make a res garrison or something like that? Um, let's check out our. Uh, if you can well, finish that. So we got our first tech. Woohoo! We will go for the speeder next. Well. I don't know if I'm going to need it for going to war, to be honest, but uh, I'm not sure how the tech tree works perfectly, so we'll go with this anyway, because we will want speeders at some point. And you're going to guard here for now. Keep it safe. Um, what I wanted to check was my uh, design. So we have res sentinels and res garrison. Um, I guess that's the best we could make for defenders, just ha the cheapest weapon. I think Resonance Armor will be quite powerful against Mindworms attacking. Um, let's double check in the data links if I'm remembering things correctly, because I might be wrong on um, on what Res Armor does. Resonance 3, physical protection of Plasma Steel with Psi Shield that confers 25% defense bonus. Yeah, so that's what I was thinking. It basically gives us Psi defense, which chances are if we are attacked it will be by Mindworms. And on the defense is the difficult time to win, so having the defense is probably for the best. So in that case, I will be building oops, one sentinel in each base. Ten turns still takes a while. Hopefully my formers and my bases grow and it speeds it up a little bit. Because uh, ten turns is pretty slow. Okay, done. Pick this up. Hopefully it's not a fungal bloom. Data pod recovered. Uh, oh, it's got the calm frequency of Captain Svensgard, the pirates, yar. Uh, yeah, that's that's fun. All right. Anyway, you can rebase. And guard. Actually, yeah, you can be rebased there. Perfect. Okay. Um, once I've got res units, I will send more scouts out and stuff. All my original units. That'll be fine. Continue on. So you are actually going to go back. Turn complete. <laughs> Until the Sentinels are done, I want this guy to keep the place from being crushed by Mindworms in one turn. It's a plan. Production Once a complete. man has changed More the tech. relationship between himself and his environment. Okay, we must be researching much quicker than I was expecting. Um, I think those recycling pods, I remember reading. Oh, uh, Unity transport fo or, sorry, transport foils. Seeing as we're on an island, I might rush this a little bit quicker. Children's Crush is incredibly good, though. It always is good. So I'm going to go, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Children's Crush first. I will want to get that transport foil before Terraform long. Terraform complete. Let's Turn upgrade complete. that. We got rid of the... Can I work that now? Yeah. So it's a little bit slower growth, but our uh, our production will go way up now that we've got that. And I'll build a mine there, too, or something, and it'll be awesome. Actually, just, uh, whatever. I don't care where you guys work. I will uh, want to be expanding quick, so I'll be making colony pods. I wonder if I should just make my defender and then build another colony pod right off the bat. Because these bases have such good uh, default stats because of their cycling tanks. Um, yeah, I don't know, that's an interesting decision. I, wanna, I want to leverage my strength as best as I can early on, so we'll see how it goes. Production complete. Okay, you are going to guard for a little bit, and so let's see. Uh, if I remember correctly, although a mine will put this up to five uh, resources, um, or minerals, sorry, um, I don't think I can actually get five out of it until I get a future tech. Uh, I think it'll still only get three minerals out of it for now. But seeing as my guy is here right now, I will build the mine anyway. This former is going to work on that nutrient. Oh, actually, I forgot to switch this off. Sorry, guys. Switch off one res sentinel. Same here. Switch off one res sentinel. This one definitely needs some more production. The former will need to work. These rocky tiles are really good for uh, mines and stuff generally. So, uh, I think nutrient resources. I wonder if I should just start building forests. Uh, last game I discovered that forests were incredibly useful. Um, I'm not sure. Again, nutrients three. Uh, with farm four, I don't think I'll be able to get four resources out of it for a while. If I build the f forest, I think it'll add one to nutrients and minerals, and one to energy as well. So let's see if I do that. 
It might not work out. I'm not the math master for this game yet. Turn so. complete. Forest, anyway. We'll see what happens. And we'll keep going. Okay. I like this early game decision-making stuff. This is my favorite part of these games. Okay, you're going to build me... You know, maybe I'll put a forest here as well. Turn I love complete. forests because uh, the future tech makes them amazing. Once you start getting tree farms and hybrid forests, then they're the best, practically. And then they spread on their own, which saves you uh, turns of your uh, formers, which is good. Turn complete. Okay, well, not a whole lot going on that turn. Production complete. Okay, we got our first res sentinel. You can actually see we got that bonus to sight uh, the way the game... If you read the, uh, the intro to our faction, it actually does uh, show more of the land around it. That's cool. So one res sentinel. Um, what should we go for here? Wreck commons for drones, or if I just go for a colony pod, then I'll have less population because it will cost me one of my population just to uh, to to pop that. You know, I think I'll do that first. We'll worry about growing our cities larger after I've colonized my island. Maybe I'm not going to be doing infinite city sprawl, of course, but I will. Uh, I will do a quick rush to have like five or six cities. I think. Um, and this place isn't going to be growing much anyway, so that will, six turns, turn it back to size one. Hopefully it'll grow back to size two before long, and, and that'll work. Uh, also, it's not a good idea to build a colony pod when you only have one size city. <laughs> I did learn that much. Okay, so you're going to guard you're there. Complete. My scout is now going to check out some new land. Now, I could technically squeeze a base in on this corner here, but I probably won't bother. Uh, we'll want one over here probably next and one over here after that. So that's where I will head. Turn complete. And then I should have room for probably two more on this side. Actually, three more, probably. Very nice. Uh, you can see the usurpers at the moment. We're in the lead and the faction dominance. Um, caretakers are right behind us. They will be our biggest threat, of course. I'll have to remember uh, what all the different names are for stuff, but uh, different letters, what they mean for which Terrible. faction. Complete. Okay, so what did I get out of that? Well, it got me basically what I thought it would do. Um, three food, two minerals, one energy. That's a pretty darn good tile for early on. So that forest, I think, was a good decision. I think that was fine. So now uh, you are going to... I could potentially start building roads to connect things up, but um, I might just build a couple forests, honestly. Um, or actually, what I don't like is having fungus right around the bases because the mine worms tend to attack. If there's uh, at least a one sort of a, a one uh, a one radius circle around your base that's clear of fungus, you probably won't get attacked by mine worms too much. Turn complete. So that's probably a good priority early on. And this tile did that turn out pretty good? Three, two, one, awesome. So I wonder if I should have built a forest on the mineral resource too. Actually, now that I think about it, interesting. Okay, so these bases are actually off to a great start. Um, I will, as I said, start by clearing out fungus probably. Get a forest or two, then clear out the fungus, then connect up the roads or something like that. Kill Turn fungus. Uh-oh. Who is that? We have to check that out. Anyway, we've got our first defender here. Um... I will actually build a colony pod here as well. Yeah, I'm going to go colony crazy, guys. And you are going to guard. You're scouting. You're killing fungus. I'm actually going to move this battle ogre. You are going to head over this way, buddy. I saw someone. I think it was like a, a, a speeder or something come zipping through. I'm assuming it might have been the pirate Svengard, like, because he probably starts with all the, the ability to transport over water. That's my guess. Uh, the good news is I do have a pretty strong defense. If he can beat a three defense already, I'll be a little bit concerned, honestly. <laughs> Besides, my battle ogre will crush him. <laughs> Maybe one more turn, then we'll wrap things up. Forest expansion. See, this is why I love forests. So good. Some vices miss what is right because okay. they are deficient. We've done that before, no Others problem. Because they are uh, now the network node's not a bad idea either, and this is the one we need to get more than three nutrients per square. So that could be good. Um. What do we think? Plasma armor is kind of pointless. I already have resonance armor, which is better than that, officially. Uh, perimeter defense is good, too, although I'm not expecting to be attacked super quick. Um, do I want to get the ability to build network nodes, or do I want water stuff? 
I think we'll go network nodes and then water stuff, because I'm not going to be going into the water too quickly. I mean, being able to get a, a couple foils out to explore is a good idea, too. Yeah, let's do that. Terraform it's a good complete. idea. Turn complete. Okay, terraforming. We've got our mine, I think, now. Yeah, so four minerals, but... Oh, I can get four minerals. I didn't think I'd be able to get that many. Hm. Oh, well, good for this base. I'll have colony pods even faster. So you're not going that way anymore. Cancel orders. I saw him. It was like up, it was like right here or something I think I saw. So, uh, all right, one more turn. I want to see this guy. I want to meet who this guy is. There he is. Who is that? Is that the pirates? It's kind of purple. Could be somebody else, too. Anyway, our first interlude. Perfect. The council might as well be dipped in a vat of flaming vegetable matter. The resonations of fear are as intense. You try to remain calm, to show a cool leadership you do not feel. Somehow, from somewhere, off-worlders are occupying the precious manifold. The key is continued... No, I'm not going to talk slow, sorry. <laughs> the key is continued communication, you alter. Their ability to make waveforms in the atmosphere is useful, but their understanding of the alteration process is key. If they can be reasoned with, they can be made ally. If they can be made ally, they can aid us against our enemy. The general nods and resonates an aura of confidence for the first time. True, he alters. But I fear, though they look like ancient feeble members of our race, they are totally alien. What if their cause and our cause do not coincide? Then we must find out their cause, you alter, and appeal to it. Because what they want us to become, all the while, we must continue to further our own aims. The xenobiologist, the closest thing you've got to a xenopsychologist, flutters his mandibles. But they claim they are here as colonists. Our aims do not and cannot coincide with this. Sooner or later, we must destroy them in order to exploit the power of the manifold experiment. You alter the biologist's words with smooth calm. I hope that this can come later. For later. Far later. We must use them first, if we can. And if we cannot, then we must destroy them swiftly and without mercy. The alterations to that are very positive. <laughs> ah, humans. I wonder if they taste good. So, <laughs> it's Data Jack Rose of the Angels on Channel 10. All right, main screen, turn on. Conqueror Mar, I how do you know our name? Data Jack Rose of the Angels at your service. I have built a magnif magnificent empire. She plans ac free information, basically. Okay. So, uh, we've met our first human. She's weak, we're strong. That's what counts. Your faction is indeed mighty one, Conqueror Mar, but my forces are strong. Oh, yes. So she... <laughs> she wants me to give her tech already. Your faction, insignificant, not worried. Conqueror Mar, we feel a strange kindred spirit. So she tried to threaten us to get some free tech. I said no, and now she wants to be friends. Well... We'll be friends for now. We did say on our interlude that if the if the humans were willing to be peaceful, we would be peaceful for a while. That's fine. If you're on the water anyway, I'm not going to be able to attack you for a while, so that's fine. Treaty, not understand jazzy, treaty anyway, agreement. There you go. Jazzy neck flaps. Psh. Excellent Conqueror, Conqueror Mar. <laughs> she even calls us Conqueror Mar. Ah, that's good. We're large planet, blah, 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 trade, commerce. Hooray, we'll be friends, well, forever. Yeah, sure. Anyway, we're done. Believe, finished. Production complete. I kind of like my alien faction. It it's, looks like fun. And we've got another defender. Good, so all my bases have res defenders now. I should be fairly, uh, fairly safe. I will similarly build a colony pod here, actually. So that will give us... Um, Three bases. One, two, three, and less population at all of them, which is fine. And uh, that'll be good. That's just perfect, I think. Not sure. I could build the base right here. One, two, one. Okay, well, it'll overlap there. Won't overlap on this side. It fills it up pretty well. Either this spot or that spot. There's not really any uh, resources. Or I could put it closer to the water. Let's see. Hmm seeing much good stuff there. Okay, you are going to perhaps help build roads. I think if I build a road here and then down, 
and sort of straight over to this tile. That will be the shortest road. Colony pod, well, for now, I'm not sure where it's going to go exactly. Okay, so I can't actually move through this guy, so I'll go Turn up complete. do a bit of exploration. Oh, I missed a sea nutrient there. Shoot. That's disappointing. I guess really maybe I should think about building a base up here or something. I don't like overlapping, but sometimes it's probably worth it. Anyway, let's wrap. That's, this is the end of episode one, and hopefully that gives you a bit of an introduction to what this gameplay is going to be like. Um, certainly our short-term goals are to conquer our island and probably put some colonies on the nearby islands. We're going to be the island controllers. I wouldn't be surprised if this is where the data jacks are from, or whatever you call them. Um, Rose... What do, we, what do you call these guys, anyway? Angels. Sorry, that's where the angels might come from. No, I'm not giving you what you want. Go away. Um, the angels might be right here, judging for where they came from, or one of these little islands. I don't know if the game would put them on teeny islands, but certainly the majority of the opponents are going to be on the large continent that goes through the entire world, basically. You can even connect up to this one. So yeah, almost everything is connected to one piece of land. Um, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting. Anyway, um, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed, and join me back next time for episode two. Have a great day.